Now, so, you know, why would we do this? Well, I gave some examples last time. Um, and uh, first of all, you know, what is stochastic approximation? I said there's a program. I can take this equation and I can multiply by minus one. Or f is a vector, I can multiply by a matrix. You know, a, a, a non tangible matrix. I can divide this function by one plus theta squared. You know, there's a million things I can do in this equation, and it's still uniquely, you know, hopefully uniquely defined there. So, so you're going to do, there's a lot of design here in, in you, know, you know, again, multiplying f by a Matrix or something like that uh, to, to make this to make theta star globally asymptotically stable equilibrium this differential equation. That's um, and uh, so and so f bar again. So for example, I, I might have my uh, f of theta n that I start with. And I convert that to some matrix times f of theta comma n divided by 1 plus the norm of theta squared. There's an example. And why would I do this? Well, you know, f might have cubic explosions. And when you have a when you have a, a function which blows up too quickly, this differential equation might not even have solution. It might have finite solution. You know? So first, I might normalize it so that it's more well behaved. You know? um, and why would I multiply by a matrix A? Well, just think about what you do normally. Like it would be A might approximate, uh, for example, A is approximately equal to minus the gradient of f bar, the original f bar. Step one, this is the renormalization I'm talking about. And you know, this is the sort of thing you might do to, uh, if, you know, to make the system locally stable. And uh, this is sort of looks like Newton Raphson. <laughs> we'll come back to that. <laughs> it turns out this is the kind of thing that we might actually do. Yeah. Um, and then, pro then step two is what is Robinson Monroe. Basic stochastic approximation is to replace a difference equation by a difference equation. So this is something you can't implement. This is something. Now, normally, when I've taught this course, I, in retrospect, I've made a terrible mistake. I only realized it this morning when I woke up. Normally, I then spend two weeks or something developing this, you know, what, when will this converge? How does it converge? What's its variance? And once all of you are sound asleep, I go back into Q-learning and TV learning. You know? <laughs> and I'm an idiot. I don't know why I've done it in the past. So, what I want to do today is just jump to the fun. Just, I just, was just woke up this morning, I realized why on earth would I develop this theory first? So uh, I know a lot of you are really eager to see this, and it's, it's very simple. It's, it's this volumeless program in a couple of lines. 
and, uh, and I'm going to just go through and explain why you can define the ODE, why it's stable, and then what does the algorithm look like, and there's a whole menu you can, you can choose from. Okay. You can do it. <laughs> so let's, let's knock off two layers of So again, I'm going to go with discounted cost because it's much easier to analyze. here, which is less than one. <clears throat> and we have that this is yeah, this dynamic programming equation. <clears throat> um, so that's the definition. That's the dynamic programming equation. That h star of x is equal to this uh, many. And so this is a thing that we can't solve in general. And I, I, I proclaim that cue learning doesn't really help us solve it either. This is just a good application of the theory. I don't think cue learning, as I'm going to describe it, is a very practical equation. It's a beautiful um, <coughs> um, application of stochastic approximation. So I'll explain why it's not practical. Mainly a <clears throat> All right. Um, so this is what I told you is called the Q function. The side is a quality function. Oh, it's a, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so let's, let, I like that. So let's, let's call it that. Uh, let, but I, I, I left out the story. Now I mean we should emphasize that that uh, it's special. Let's put the story. Here. And so. Again, we have this. Uh, here we had a fixed point equation for each star. But uh, I want to change the notation. And, and say, let's define this to be this. What I mean is, is when I write a, lo a lower bar, I mean take the minimum. Give me any function of two variables, if I take the minimum over the, the input variable, I'd have called it q lower bar. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so all right, so the what I want to what I want to get across is um all right. So let's let's forget the math. So I want to consult on Wall Street today and give them their optimal algorithm for making choices on, uh, on, on options and other things, and so forth, you know? And they're gonna pay me 300 bucks an hour, that's all I care about, that's my objective function. I've already optimized. And how am I gonna do this? Well, some people, like myself, I mean, I haven't done it personally, but I know people that have, have gone to Wall Street and said, it's a, it's a, it's a Markov, controlled Markov tree. And, and the actions of which stock I should buy, and the rewards, how much money I make, and five states. <laughs> I don't know what they are, but they're five states. And, um, and I've got my inputs. And, but that, well, I don't know what it is. <laughs> that, I don't know what it is. I don't know anything. <laughs> but I'm going to learn this based on, 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 on input output memory. And so that's the answer. You can, so you can, 
education algorithm where you can learn, you don't need to know anything about the system. You can just pretend that you have a, a state, you know, take, take five observables and call them states, and your, your actions, and you, um, you, you can basically find the best that you can. That's the thing. So it's a reinforcement learning a set of third sort. know the system, then we would be better off just using value iteration or policy iteration? Yeah, well, actually, uh, the question is, if we really knew, if we had a precise model to you, uh, should we just use policy iteration and value iteration? Yes. <laughs> because Q-learning, uh, the variance is so large, you know, in, in, the, in the simulation based method, that really I just don't see much differentiation. Yeah. Um, but so why am I wasting the time? I I think that oh wait, hold, then I'm jumping ahead. I'm going to talk about the app, the, the uh, application issues at the end. Um, let me go, let me let me stick with this since I started. So we've got the, the real world view and so the reinforcement learning you have the real world. You apply an input. Which stocks do I buy? Get an output. How much money do I make? You know, and and you pretend X is a state. You know, it never really is. You, know? you just pretend that you have an observation of the state, and then you take your Q-learning algorithm, and out comes. So the, the reason I would still keep this in my toolbox is that in some cases, maybe I'll get away with murder. You know, maybe I won't, even though a, a accurate model for this real world is a 500-dimensional nonlinear differential equation you know, with some sort of wild shock noise, maybe I can take some features and take my inputs and get a good enough approximation of reality to get a good, a good control solution. And, uh, and given the fact that, with that point of view, I have no model. <laughs> you know, if I'm just have just an ad hoc fashion, just pretending that's the state, and and then pretending it's an ad hoc model, uh, the simulation based method seems to work really well. Yeah. And, and you know, there's two things you could do. You could first try to get a best model of the system, and then based on that, apply value iteration. But uh, going straight to try and approximate the value function um, makes sense. You know, you're going straight to what you care about. You're not trying to approximate the system dynamics. You don't care about that. If you know the Q function, you've solved the problem. You don't care about all the dynamics. If you solve this, this function, you know the minimize over you is the optimal policy. So why not go directly to estimate what you, are, what you care about? So that, that's the motivation. So if we know the QSR, we know all the dynamics? But no, not at all. I don't care about the dynamics. We know the policy. Because the minimizer here is the optimal policy. As far as I know, the, uh, these learning algorithms, they're not always optimal because uh, your learning is limited and uh, no, you're right. kind of just no. say, this is good enough for me. No, no this is optimal. It's optimal? <laughs> you know, this is optimal. I mean, basically, nobody knows what happens in the real world. There's no theory involved. You know, when you do these ad hoc tricks, you pretend that the stock market's a five-dimensional, five-state markup channel. You know, no, there's no theory to back that up. But if, if you apply this, uh, you know, um, so, all right, so the point of this is that we had a fixed point in H, we can translate that to a fixed point uh, equation in Q. Uh, 
that's the definition of Q. All I've done is I've substituted that H star is equal to Q lower bar. You know? it's, it's so simple it confuses people to death. There's just a one step substitution. Okay? All right. I've taken this equation and I said, ah, H star. H star is nothing but Q lower bar. And I plugged it in to get this equation. That's fundamental. So this putting that minimum in here instead of outside is the genius. <laughs> it's, it's the only way you get an algorithm. It's just, it's just uh, it was Watkin one night just woke up in the middle of the night screaming and ran to the you know, not, you know, ran to his uh, pen and paper. I mean, this was just genius. Okay? <laughs> this is the one big idea that's looking at this tree. Take getting the minimum inside. And why is that? Why is that as clear? Is that now we can define our F and we can we can use the stochastic approximation machinery. That, now, Watkins wasn't thinking of the stochastic approximation. It wasn't, it wasn't in his toolbox. But um, we can come with simulation-based algorithms. And here we go. So again, I call this identification. I'm not sure this was clear last time, but in stochastic approximation, we're trying to learn a parameter, theta, which is an RD. So it's a bunch of numbers we're trying to learn. Okay? I'll put a star there. So in the general stochastic approximation, we're trying to learn a d-dimensional parameter. Okay? In Q-learning, we're trying to learn a d-dimensional parameter, where d is the number of states plus the number of actions. Is that clear? So we're, 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 I, we're saying Q star is theta. Okay, so that's the beginning of step one, this program. Alright, then, then we have... So this should be on... Underline Q, right? Oh, there was something where? Because where? HSR is Q, Q underline is equal to the. These are equal? Yes, yes. So when you put, replace it down there, you should no, put no, it. No, no, no. This is the thing that always confuses people. So Q is this thing in brackets. There it is. These are the same thing. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Every, don't worry. Everyone, everyone, everyone gets stuck there a couple of times. You know? It's just, it's too simple. Yeah. So, so we had to we have to assume that, that our state space is finite and yes. that kind of small? That's, that's, that's why Q learning is absurd. Because you have to assume you have yeah. five states. Yes, yeah, yeah, it's completely absurd. Yeah. Yeah. And so, I don't think I have time today, but there are ways of, of looking for the state. So I can, have, I can have a general state space, you know, my state space could be R, but then I have to have a permutation. And there, is, there are ways to do that. There's a beautiful theory in the deterministic case. You know, where you have dynamical systems that are not And for the general Markov case, it's a principle. It's a principle. It's still one of the how to do that. How do that work? Okay. So, Watkins algorithm, this, that, this is Watkins. <laughs> and it's what you find in Wikipedia and any book. It's basically you have to, we're not trying to approximate, in Watkins algorithm, we're not trying to approximate this Q function, we're trying to compute it exactly. Oh, I, I just don't think so. Yeah. Okay, so again, so I, I mentioned this last time, and then, um, let me repeat it. My, what is f of theta star n? I wrote it down before. It's going to be, I'll oh, oh, blow it here a second, buddy. It's, um, I've got this fixed point equation I'm just going to raise it.
critical thing. See, so the critical thing is that PU defined an expectation. So n is a huge, long, vector-valued uh, IID, maybe not IID, I mean, uh, stochastic, uh, a random variable, okay? It's indexed by x and y. So just like theta is indexed by i, I'm thinking of x and u for q star as index variables. Well, n is indexed by x and y. So, um, um, Really, I, what I should do is I should make that explicit. Yeah. Yeah. And then it looks weird. It's just that, think about this. I should put in F sub I. <laughs> yeah. F is a big, long vector. In the stochastic approximation framework, it would be fi i equals 1 to d. Well, i now is xu. So xu goes over all possible values. So n is allowed to be a, a vector valued n variable that's parameterized by x and u. And have we ever done any approximation here, right? If we no, get an expectation, we get the exact same thing, right? Well, that's the thing I'm trying to, yeah, well, exactly. Yeah, well, there's no approximation in any of this. Q learning is not about approximation. Q learning is about exact computation. Okay. Um, so again, so uh, n of x u, n, n x u has distribu distribution x t plus one, given x t equals x and u t equals u. Right. So now let me give you some algorithms. Um, let me jump to the algorithm. Let, let me jump to step two before step. I was supposed to first go to step one is, is look at node E, make sure it's stable. And once I do that, I look at the, I get a stochastic approximation algorithm. Um, it's uh, pretty easy to jump through the algorithm and just you know, look at the ODE second step. Uh, so I look at this after. Okay. So approximate dynamic programming, remember that's the case where I assume I just know the system completely. I just, you know, P, P U is given. So the approximate dynamic programming algorithm is just to just generate N IID. <laughs> you know, so I, I, I just read a computer At each time t, I generate a billion random variables. For every x of u, I generate uh, a n of t, uh, you know, with this distribution. So the probability what would this probability be? Probably going from x to x to y, right? So I can do that in the computer. 
step, I have to run, <coughs> run the rand command for every x and every u. And then I would have um, um, uh, this is this my app. Let me plug it in. my F. Plug it in. So for every x, so when time t plus 1 comes up, up, I update the entire quality matrix, or whatever, whatever we wanted one to call it. I have to go through and I have to run the rand command. Given x and given u, I've got to go and run, run a random uh, number generator to generate a random variable that has just this, this law. And I've got to do that for every x and x. So that, that would be the algorithm step, right? just, just like this one. You see, I, the, old, the new Q is the old Q plus a gain times F. If Watkins was in the room, he would punch me in the face. This is not what he had in mind at all. <laughs> if, I had, if I knew PU and I could do this, I'd run value. No. I wouldn't do this. It, 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 this would be very, you know, it's, it's time consuming to run the, to, to, um, it's time consuming to generate these random number, number, numbers, it's the variance issues, it's, it's it would converge, but why not just run values? So, so I'm just saying that this is a, one thing you could do. So what did Watkins do? This algorithm will stand uh, pretty much. Um, pretty much, pretty much, pretty much. Um, I'm going to have to change my app a little bit. modifying my F. So in the reinforcement layer again, I'm actually observing the system. And I can, I'm, I'm not going to make any changes in, unless I uh, observe something useful. So given that, so at, uh, here, time t comes along, I'm going to observe something. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to have uh, applied some input, and I'm going to have seen some state. Right? And I'm going to then update according to this this law. But I'm gonna, I have to rewrite it because it's a bit different. I believe. That, th that these observations come from a Markov model. And if I believe that, that given that I've observed x naught and u naught, the next state is going to be you know, distributed as I like. You know? <laughs> so I, 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 you know, 
I'm, I'm saying, hey, I believe that this, you know, this is true. And then uh, QT plus 1 of X2, what do you think that's going to be? For any other X and U, well, I haven't observed an X state corresponding to them, so I can't, I haven't learned anything. I can apply without knowledge of anything. I could just go pretend that I, I see a state and go through and, and, and run this algorithm. You see there's no P anywhere here. I'm taking my observations of reality and then updating my Q function whenever I, I see uh, uh, <clears throat> whenever I see uh, It's a very different f on the right hand side because of the fact that it's um, the f here now is zero everywhere except for one entry. So it's a little bit uh, more subtle to so plug this into the best approximation. Um, but but that, that's the algorithm. And um, um, yeah. What does the big zero and zero signify? No, I'm just saying. No, they, no, no, no. Just I've observed something. I mean. I, I should put a def definition here. So, no, I don't choose anything. This is real life. I, I'm now on Wall Street, and I'm making money, and I'm pulling knobs and observing things. And at time t, I, would observe, I will have applied something. You know, and I will have seen something. And I'm just saying, whatever those are, I'm going to update the Q function for those two values and leave everything else the same. That's all. So I'm not, I'm not, I put the knots there just to say they're distinguished. At time to observe these things. No, that's approximate dynamic programming. There, here, I don't, where do you see a PU coming up? It's not, it's just reality. Okay. It seems like we're learning more than what we really care about. Uh -huh. Are there any algorithms that let you just learn you? Without having to learn this, no, no, it's, it's just not possible. I mean, there's some ugly algorithms for just learning. I mean, they're just so non-convex and awful. It just seems like I mean, it's yeah. less information, or you have to learn more information. It's well, like the first should be easier. Well, here's the amazing thing again. So remember when I I was able to say that that uh, um, uh, Markov just said you know dynamic programming can be cast as a linear program, but we had to increase the dimension of the of the the linear program had to be variables next to mu. If I didn't make it variables next to mu, I'd lose it as a linear program. Um, here, I have to go to a higher dimension to get anything that works. So this, this homework problem, and those of you who registered, there was a Schweitzer's algorithm for computing sensitivity. That's the way to just learn the policy directly, and it's horribly non-convex. So, so, um, yeah. so, um, um, Now, what's the difference between these two? So this is just sitting right here in my, in my toolbox of a stochastic approximation. This apparently looks a little bit outside, because if I want to write this as, as um, qt plus 1 equals some function, Actually, you see that I've got randomness now in the X views as well. And so my noise now is going to be actually X T and X T plus one stack together. In terms of analysis and stochastic approximation, it's much more complex. Because now we're getting samples from the real world, that's the noise. And uh, I can define F for you, but Jesus, let's not do it. <laughs> That's why 
analysis of, of this algorithm is a little more complex in the stochastic approximation framework. Not, not, not too bad. Okay. Now, what are the issues? Um, let's, let's forget about um, stability theory and all of that. So I, I realize I'm not going to have time. Um, but uh, do you think this is going to work? Just think he's an engineer, forget about anything else. I'm only updating this Q function and I observe a pair X and Y. Exactly in our in our banded problem. Exactly, exactly, exactly. You know, you know, basically if I put in what I think is the optimal control, I might be doing really well. Maybe I'm nearly optimal. <laughs> well that means that X is practically constant. So I'm not seeing any x's, and u is practically constant. I'm not seeing any u's. No. Um, but what's beautiful is this. Let's just take the Watkins algorithm. this grand as a theorem. Uh, suppose I do explore. So uh, suppose that we use a randomized station of policy. Um, and this should be And we, we've seen that the joint process uh, X and U together is a Markov chain. Um, this joint process is a Markov chain. And you know, this was the basis of a lot of things we've done before. Um, the, um, um, and so it's got an invariant probability distribution. So everything is finite state space. This is a finite state space Markov chain. We know it has an invariant measure. Maybe, maybe, maybe it has millions of them. But let's say it has, assume it has a unique invariant distribution. Then. And moreover, I explore. Right? So if by saying that gamma of xq is positive for every x of u, means I reach every possible x in the theory. So I will, I will see every theory fully often. <coughs> so like in the banded problem, where I had to pull an arm infinitely often, right here, right away, I pull, I pull every arm infinitely often. Well then, this works. That's all you need. And if you don't have that, then how, per, how on earth could you learn? If you don't have this, then there'll be points you never visit. So you'll never update them. <laughs> so just like the Manic problem, you'll never learn it. So you absolutely have to have this. And that's it. So it's, yeah, and the proof of this, once you know this stochastic approximation, nails, nothing, nothing. You just need the ODE has to be stable. Uh, so, so we are saying that. Uh, observations of x0, u0, given 
I mean, observations of x at t plus 1 given x at t and u at t don't tell us anything about any other state but that state action pair. Well, because we don't know anything about the system. Yeah. Yeah, right. I mean, in this, in this setting, we're assuming that, you know, yeah, that's right. We're assuming you know nothing about the system. Um, but you see, so here's the fun part is that you notice that I don't need to do anything, anything, anything. I'm just exploring. It's not like a bandit problem where I was like trying to make money as I was going along. I mean, here I'm just pumping in some crazy input and throwing in some noise to play some more, and I learn the optimal okay. of Q function. Yeah. So the only difference between ADP and Q learning simulated experience versus real experience? Yeah, that's right. ADP, you do it all in the computer, you never have to see the overall. And you can feel really good for the conversion of the files, apparently. <laughs> um, I mean, you won't see all the, all the processing when you have to compute all those random numbers. You know? um, but when you do the simulations, you'll see that the Q functions will, will converge really fairly quickly. When you do this, you know, it only updates when you see it uh, up there, so this can take a long time to convert. And it's also based on real world data, which could but it's so easy to code. I mean, look at that. You know, it's, that's, I mean, that is the kind of thing. That, that's why things like this catch on like wildfire. It's something that anyone can code in a second. And, and you don't need to know anything to make it work. But, and so in the real world, you have no guarantee that you're going to visit every single pair. Yeah, that's why it's absurd. So that's why from an engineering point of view, for any, any system of interest, there's so many X's and U's, it's absurd. It'll take a million years, you know, to learn. So, that, so, um, so the way this applies in practice is people pretend that it's a five-state markup model, even though it, it's five billion states. You know? and, and, some, and, 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 and sometimes that's successful. But then you, you have the problem of trying to map a large set of information, essentially, onto your... Well, here, but here, so the question is, you know, there's this problem of model reduction. You know, how do you take a five million state Markov model and approximate by a five state Markov model? And what, you know, what a consultant does on Wall Street is they just run it. They don't try to. The model reduction is done for you. you know? And if you're lucky, then it works. You know? <laughs> and that, that's how it's used. And that, that, that's how Q-learning is used. In terms of the practice, it's only used in that set of, of just cross your fingers and hope it's going to work. Okay. Uh, is there any relationship between the expected value and the variance of the big distribution gamma and the rate of convergence of the algorithm? Okay, well, you know, it's a beautiful question. So, you know, um, if I hope we'll see, I might have some night lectures just for those of you who want to see more, I don't think we'll have time for all this, but you know, under general conditions, <coughs> if, you take the, if you take the gain to be the same as the gain in Monte Carlo, you find that we also get a rate of convergence that um, the square root of t times qt minus q star goes to a Gaussian. All right? And you can imagine that this sigma is going to blow up when gamma is very small because it takes so long to make updates. Huge, huge variance. Now, when I write general conditions, that's general conditions for stochastic approximation. I don't know of any papers where they've actually applied that to Q learning. It'd be a great project if any of you have studied Q learning for your projects. It'd be, you know, it's very simple. There's a very simple formula for sigma. That would be really easy to work out for Q learning. I, I've just never done it, and I haven't seen anyone else do it. But, um, um, under really mild conditions, sigma is really identifiable, it's infinity. <laughs> you get convergence, but the CLT variance is infinity. And uh, I, I suspect it's infinity. 
Um, notice that I've got a scalar gain here. I'm not doing any of that matrix normalization. That could be stupid. That's another problem with QRN. Because nobody's ever bothered to think about variance issues. I've never seen a paper or book that is. And there's a beautiful theory for variance and stochastic approximation. I don't know why it's not implemented in this setting. So you could, if we use a matrix gain, we could improve the conversion so much because we could reduce that variance. As far as I know, um, does that answer the question? It made more than asked. The rate of but the rate of convergence is one of a square root of t under general conditions, which I don't know if they're verified here. It could be lots of Um, like, uh, I should put in here a, a even for a scalar gain, gamma has to be between big bounds, you know, <laughs> to get a finite variance. Uh, frustrating. Um, but, um, so what, what did I not have time to do? to make sure I understood these algorithms. What I didn't have time to do is this. Okay. And uh, for the ADP algorithm, you know, we have to look at the ODE. And uh, um, basically, it's, I'm not going to give you the details, but if I define Q tilde T to be equal to QT minus Q star, and I look at the norm squared, <coughs> Take you guys about uh, five lines of. of, of uh, I, we could do it in that many lines, but I've run out of time. This is less than or equal to minus one minus beta times q tilde t squared. <laughs> so I get I get exponential conversion. Quality, I get the Q tilde of the error, QT minus Q star goes to zero exponentially for us. And that's all we need, right? That's what we need. We need that uh, stability of the fluid model, the OD model, in order to guarantee the stability of the stochastic model. So this proof is so fast it's ridiculous for the ADP model. For the reinforcement learning algorithm, the fact that my noise is now XTXT plus one makes it hard. Yeah. Uh, 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 for uh, for QT sub sub uh, x t plus one, if we do not know the transition uh, transition P U, how how can we, we know? observe it? We observe it. This is reality. Okay. See, I'm talking about reality. I mean, for example, for the t plus one, where x is. We see it. No, no, we, we observe it. Yeah. We update we update the Q function t m t plus one based on observing uh, the state of time t plus one, and these and these guys here, you know, that is x p. We observed it. And the whole point is that I only update the x0, u0 uh, component of q if x t happens to be x0 and u t happens to be x0. And each time we observe something. You know? So at each time we update something in q. And we want it to be able to explore enough so we can observe it. I'm really glad I did this. Right. 
No, I really want to make sure you understood this. I hope that's clear. So, again, ADP analysis is just, it's just so mundane, it's ridiculous. It's a bit more complex. I don't know. I don't know. I want to, I want to take this approach. So, next lecture, I'm gonna, we're going to nail TV learning. Lecture after that, least squared is TV learning. You know, and, and then um, we'll do the analysis after that. For you, you all. I'll also put the pressure on you. Is an exam next uh, in, uh, Thursday, week from tomorrow, and it, it puts the pressure on you to really make sure you understand that. You know, what it is. Just the algorithms before the exam. So I'll send up a, an announcement, informational exam either to you. And it's not. Uh, uh, are we going to have one more homework after the no, paper? No more. Okay. Three, three just a brief, brief paper last, project. Yeah. I'll just. I want you to concentrate the project. There's no class on Friday. Monday. Monday. Yeah. Monday. Yeah. Monday. Yeah. Monday. So I'll see you on Monday. No, no what's Monday? Monday. What? what? No, not Monday. It's like Thursday. 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 Oh, that's awful. Good time to get a vacation in. I guess so. Well, I'm glad I did this. So I know this Thanksgiving. Isn't you sure you don't want to move the test back? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's. Oh, let's yeah. Let's yeah. Yeah. We have homework on Wednesday. Just do it this Thursday. What's that? Just do it this Thursday. Oh, yeah, tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. He has no influence. <laughs> I mean, if there's... I'll, I will consider it, actually. I didn't realize... That's on my Monday. Yeah. Whoa, this is sad. Um, anyway, if, if, uh, if there's serious interest in moving the uh, exam, I will consider it, actually. But... Uh, um, send me your thoughts if you have either objections or I think it's a good idea. Just send me an email. Let me know. Okay? Oh, that's, that's good.